This video is brought to you by ExxonMobil Aviation Lubricants. Thursday, July 26, 2007. It would be a quick flight and a private briefing with FAA Administrator Marion Blakey following her Meet the Administrator session at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. Avweb was one of four media outlets invited aboard the FAA's $25 million Bombardier Global 5000 business jet. Blakey used the flight time to showcase the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast or ADSB system, which when implemented would usher in a new level of situational awareness for all aviators. But it is also a key element in the administration's push to impose user fees on general aviation. We'll show you how Blakey's aide, Wilson Felder, explained the system and follow that up with some quick sound bites direct from Blakey and her staff. This is the kind of system that you would see in a typical small general aviation aircraft. Eventually, this system will help us do a better job of running our air traffic control across the nation. But the first thing we're going to do is roll out nationwide the ground systems. Those ground systems are going to provide weather data in the form of textual tasks and METARs, and they're going to provide uh, NEXRAD uh, graphical data for the pilots, as well as a consolidated traffic information display with all of our radar traffic consolidated into one place and then broadcast up here. And that will be available, that's available today, in fact, to any general aviation pilot who can uh, go and buy uh, this equipment on the market. It's available and certified to be put in the airplane. Now, we'll use the data we collect from this to help us design the future air traffic control system. But it's available for safety purposes to GA pilots right now. If you think about it, what we normally do is we build our systems for the heavy iron first, and then they trickle down to GA. This is really the first system we've done in the FAA where we're making it available to GA first and then working the other way. Um, I'm a general aviation pilot in addition to my job at the FAA. I've flown with this system. I've got about 50 or 60 hours as a pilot in command of Cessna 172s that uh, carry this gear, and I can tell you it saved my life at least two or three times. At least has lowered my pressure considerably in terms of listening to air traffic control, calling out, out traffic, and being able to look on this screen and see exactly where I am and where the traffic around me is. Other FAA staffers offered these contacts. How's it been working up there? It's great. Of course, we, at Juno, in the area where I live, and up in Bethel, so phase one and phase two of the capstone program. Most of the part 135 or the commercial airplanes have it, which is most of the traffic, so we can all see each other. Uh, and it came, the capstone program came with much more than that. We can see all the terrain, we know where we are, uh, just all kinds of techn technologies put together to, uh, to make it. I, as a pilot, that's what I did for a living when they hired me at the FAA. It's a million times safer. There's just no comparison. I would hate to go back to not having this stuff. The position you get from the ADSB is very precise because it's the best navigation solution the airplane has. And these aircraft are very, very good without knowing where they are uh, with GPS, with INS, with the other uh, systems they have now. Probably yeah, improve human performance, human performance by giving them technology to improve that That's essentially what air traffic, air traffic, air traffic air management is about. I don't think that we'll reduce the number of air traffic controls. We'll give them the ability, without working harder, to manage more traffic that will be in the system. It's time to say, you know, we're at a point where you've got to change the system, and this will be functionally one of the most important elements in there. Today, we say you cannot be any closer than 4,300 feet under uh, simultaneous instrument approaches. We can do a lot better than that. So where might the lower 48 expect to see ADSB first? We have formed, I think, a very um, constructive approach with the helicopter industry, the oil industry in the Gulf, uh, where their business is highly disrupted by the weather patterns. And they are therefore working with us to establish the GBTs on the oil platforms. So we will have, for the first time, a, if you will, we will call it a ground base, but it's a uh, seagoing in this case, 
Uh, surface. At least, yes, it's yeah. surface, it just happens to be the waters, the surface in that case. Uh, system there relatively quickly. Uh, the same thing is true in the uh, Louisville, Ohio River Valley, and in Philadelphia. So that's the next phase. Philadelphia and Louisville are because UPS, on a sure. volunteer basis, elected to be an early adopter. And um, they hub out of Philadelphia as well as out of uh, Louisville. The FAA has tied implementation of ADSB to user fees, but the decision currently rests with your representatives in Congress. Congress is due to pass a new FAA funding bill September 30th, 2007. Stay tuned.